Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today what I want to show is an age-old question. We've been getting this since I've been in business. I thought, man, why not just show it once and do a video and that way when folks ask, you could show it to them on video instead of doing samples all the time. What I'm going to do here, guys, we're doing a two-coat system, a scratch and a brown. And they said, I want it smooth. And I said, well, how smooth do you want it? Do you want a, a scratch and a brown and let it cure and do a Santa Barbara or BMI marble or a smooth finish like that? Or do you want a two coat system? He says, I want a two coat system. We're going to paint it and I want it as smooth as you can get to two coat. So I thought I'd show you folks how smooth we can get the two coats. Some do's and don'ts. First thing we're going to do is I had this board set up on the ground and Jay said, hey, dad, do you really want to bend down? And I said, hell no, not if I don't have to. So he set me up here. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to scratch this out. I want to simulate exactly what we're doing the best way possible. And that way means I have to do, oh, my first coat at 3 8 and then my second coat at 3 8 So right now I'm going to do all these squares. I won't bore you with doing them all, but what I'll do is this one's going to be a hard rubber float finish. That's using this after it cures to show you how smooth we can get it. And hopefully Jay can zoom in with that camera and show you a little bit better. This is going to be a light float finish. This is going to be a heavy float finish, a little extra water. And this is going to be a steel trowel finish. I'll take my steel trowel and I'll finish it. What happens if you use a steel trowel with a scratching brown? It cracks. Is that normal? Yes. That's why what they do is they put two coats they do a, a scratch coat, they allow a scratch coat to cure, then they come with a second coat. And that also is allowed to cure. And what will happen with those two coats? Naturally, during the drying process, which is 48 hours for a scratch, oh, about, uh, I would say, we usually go a week minimum to two weeks to three weeks in the winter to allow the brown coat to cure if we're going to do uh, this, a color coat. So uh, what I'm going to do here is get these coats on, finish this one up here, clean it up a little bit, put my scratch marks, allow that to set for, for a little while. Then we're going to come back and do the follow-up coat. I'll show you that when we get to that point. Okay guys, we got that scratch coat set up. Uh, feel like I'm back in apprentice school. We had to do a lot of these samples. A minute ago I was kind of nervous about putting these finishes on because I thought this board was going to flip, but that's a pretty solid already. So now I'm just going to go ahead and, and brown out these squares and I'll show you what the heck I'm referring to with these different finishes. Okay, we just spread this guy out. Damn. What are you doing, dude? You're supposed to be working. It's lunch time. Just because you work on lunch doesn't mean I have to. Well, that's one way to spend your lunch time in 100 degree weather. Then again, Jason and I are showing you guys how to do this. I couldn't have picked, uh, well, it all depends on how you look at it. It's a hot day, but I don't mind working in the heat. I'd rather work in the heat than, say, 40 degrees or the cold. I actually love the heat. Plus, it's helping this sample dry out. Oops, get back to where we started. Wow. That's for sure this, this little A-frame we set up won't flip now because it's pretty sturdy. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to show you immediately what I'm referring to as far as uh, these textures. And should I wait 48 hours and come back and show you, I could, but I think you guys will get the point. Well, I hope you will, uh, because again, I'm going to use this video here to show what you can and what you can't do and what to expect from me or anybody. It doesn't matter who's doing your stucco work. If you tell a fella, hey, all I want is two coats. Well, besides the skip trial finish, I'll show you what we can do as far as to get it smooth. 
Now keep in mind, guys, I've done houses. I've done a few custom homes, 8,000, 10,000 square foot houses. And I've had people say, Kirk, I want a hard steel trowel finish. And I tell them all, well, if you want a hard steel trowel finish and you only want the two coats, you know that when the scratch and the brown cure, naturally, it's going to hairline. The degree of hairline depends on, say, the house. If it's a brand new house on three stories, new foundation, that house is going to crack because of settling. If it's a 50-year-old house, three stories, it's going to likely cr crack less. Anyhow, I think uh, I'm getting the feel for this right here to see just how much time is necessary. I can look at all, all of these coats and determine when to do my finish. And so stay with me because as I'm just trimming out the corners, making it look pretty, which is not necessary, it's also giving me a chance to get a feel. I'm feeling this out and seeing when it's ready for the rest of my so-called uh, smooth finishes. Okay, guys, what we're, we're, stage we're in right now is some of it's ready, some's not, but I don't need it completely ready to show what I'm trying to do. Okay, guys, let me show you a few things. These are hard rubber floats, hard rubber. That means they're rubber and they're hard. This is a plastic float. It's for polishing, usually interior. These are swimming pool trowels when you're doing swimming pools. You may have noticed I use these quite a bit. I fancy them. They're great. Uh, square trowels. Sponge floats. Okay. Now, Dan walked by earlier. He says, Dad, I can't even make out what that is. How are the people on the camera going to do it? This is a hard rubber float, what I'm going to show you up here. Hard rubber float finish. Down here is going to be a heavy float finish. A heavy just means a lot of water. Up here is a light float finish, a little bit of water, so it comes out a lot smoother. The grain uh, is going to be very fine. This is going to be very heavy because I'm going to use a lot of water. Over here is just going to be a steel trowel finish. All right, I'm going to take the hard rubber float. These are hard rubber, guys. And now this is for a two-coat system. We can do an entire wall like this. Now, again, if we do the entire wall like this, it kind of looks like a, um, uh, well, you, you can still see the grit, guys. There is some grit because you could only float sand so smooth. Just like when you trowel it, you could only sand trowel down so smooth. Uh, so the sand, uh, if it was interior plaster, yeah, you can make that pretty smooth. Uh, like, I don't like to use the terminology glass, uh, but you could... You can get it uh, interior much smoother. On exterior, you have sand to deal with. Even if you use a finer sand, which tends to crack more, you still have sand. Now that's that's about that's what we call a hard rubber exterior two coat float system. Now I'll start up here. A light float finish. Now I have one of my floats in a bucket of water right here. This one's got water in it. So if I hit this, the water's going to drip down here, and that's not what I'm looking for. These are both dry. In order to prove a point. I will just use a dry float. And basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing out a little bit of sand. I'm straightening the wall out, compressing it, and bringing out a little bit of sand. And I can go this, I can bring the sand out twice as much or half as much. But this is what I consider a light float finish. It would just, very light. We just keep going over it, then we let up. And if I wanted to, I can get it even smoother than that by allowing time or just coming back with a dry float. Time, and since I'm working against time, meaning I'm doing all this right now rather than three separate days, that, that is a light float finish done with these green sponge floats. Okay, I will do this one here. This is a heavy float finish. Or you can go medium or heavy float finish. Now, the idea is put some water on it, guys. Now the water brings out the sand, or aggregate. Okay, it's bringing out the so-called aggregate. Aggregate's just a fancy word for sand or rocks. Portland cement has sand. Concrete has rocks, both made with Portland cement. The only difference is the aggregate size. Okay, now you see 
that brings out a lot of the grit. If I want to bring even more, I just put more water. See, and just, I could leave float lines in it where you see the, the lines, or I could just go over it a few times where there's no float lines. But you get the idea, okay. Now that is a heavy float finish, and this is the less likely to crack of all of them. But will they all? Absolutely. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is a hard steel trowel finish. And I could use a square trowel or the other trowel. Now this here, again, you could only steel trowel sand so much. Again, I stay away from that terminology glass because this has sand in it. This is mighty smooth right here. What happens with the mighty smooth two coat finish? This when it cures or cracks, but we don't have that time and we're not going to show that. I'm just going to explain it. You will get cracks in it, hairline cracks, like when I say hairline, like the hair on your head. It will crack, especially under windows and doors, if you just do a two coat system. When I worked Union 30 years ago, we had slickers like this, two hand, and we would slick the houses down. And that was when I was working for McDermott and Sealy, Danny Smith Plastery, and a lot of those big companies. And the slickers, we'd do the scratch coat, then the brown, and we slick it. And I, I remember saying, hey, isn't it going to crack? He said, that's not our business. Our job is to do a two coat finish. And so, last thing I'm going to show you guys is Jay said, well, Dad, how, how about we do either a BMI marble or um, a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish over one of these patches? And so he loaded it up. We're going to show you that, but this has got to cure out again. Another, another, in this sun, we're we're about 100 right now. In this sun, this got to hit it about another um, 20 minutes. Maybe we might even let it get to be an hour. We're trying to simulate this as best as possible to the actual scratch coat, 48 hour cure, brown coat, two week cure, and then a color coat, uh, which is done after that. And by, the, and by the way, too, if you're doing all that system, you hydrate the walls. Anyhow, in about a half hour, hour, depending, we're, we're doing a lot of other stuff here, guys. We're multitasking. I'll come back and show you the Santa Barbara smooth finish. It's not going to be much smoother than this, but the idea is if we do a two coat finish, guys, doesn't matter who does it, doesn't matter what contractor does it, it will hairline crack every single time. It's natural and normal for a two coat to hairline. That's why we allow it to dry. So then a third coat will cover it. But the majority of my work, they say Kirk two coats. And so I'm hoping this video will explain once and for all the same question I've been asked over and over for 25 years. Okay guys, we're at the final stage of this long drawn out sample. My son Dan, who is my biggest critic, he, he has more questions than anybody. He came over here and started messing with this and, and hard rubber floating it. If you, if you allow this to set and then you come back, it kind of, when it's dry, it gives a totally different finish. So the finish I was showing you earlier was, was that right there. You got to hit it right the right time. If you hit it too late, then you'll get that. It's not what I was referring to. Anyhow, now Dan also says, well, Dad, uh, I was telling him what I was going to do. And he says, what's the difference if you're not going to get it any smoother than this? Because the fact is, this, I'm not going to get it any smoother than that. The big, big difference, guys, is is what this whole video is about. For a two coat system and a steel trial finish, expect hairline cracks. Uh, the proper way is to hydrate this and allow it to cure for two to three weeks. And then you come back with either uh, uh, BMI's marble finish for a smooth finish, or you come with La Habra's Santa Barbara smooth mission finish, Western has it, and there's about 50 others in acrylics too. Okay, for the sake of, uh, I already see this starting a hairline right here. But anyway, for the sake of the next coat, you would apply it. This is, um, I think this is BMI because we were just using it with their product. But even, it's a cementitious finish, guys. A cementitious finish is different from, say, the acrylics. So, why would anybody use an acrylic? Well, it's their choice. Uh, okay, guys, let's see. Now, so this is the smooth finish. And what we generally do, guys, is we, we start a whole wall, go down and come back, and then double it up. But for the sake of this, there's no need to. It's just what should be. The idea is to explain it where you get an idea of what's going on. 
you just trial it, trial it, trial it, get all the lines out, and you can still see the brown coat. That second coat covers that, but both finishes will be similar. The, the only difference is this is the proper way to get a smooth finish with, and with the least amount of cracks. And can even a Santa Barbara or a BMI or any other cementitious finish crack when you're done? Absolutely, but it's less likely to crack as much as a two-coach system. Anyhow, guys, I sure hope that answers some of those questions. If not, just call me, email me, and say, Kirk, hey, I don't understand this or that. If you like what we do, please click down and subscribe. Um, anyhow, guys, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera, as usual. Um, we'll see you folks on the next one. Have a great day.